Okay, so welcome to the second video of what's going to be various videos discussing the accounting process. This will cover chapters one through three um, of accounting 2021. And so, and probably uh, about 75% of the first test. Okay, so I left off, and like I said before, um, a lot of these videos will cut off abruptly because um, they're only 15 minute videos. And I'm not going to be looking at the timer. So if I cut off abruptly, don't worry. Just go to the next video that follows. And um, and I'll pick up from there. Um, so in the last video, I was cut off when I was talking about the chart of accounts. Every company has a chart of account. And um, these are custom made for the companies, although they there's various accounts that are probably universally that are used by almost all companies right so you're gonna have a cash account in, in almost every company that exists accounts receivable is a, is an account that probably will be in every GL um, and depreciation and um, you know common stock retained earnings accounts payable for the most part there's accounts that everybody uses but but um there may be accounts that are specifically for certain companies um, and that don't exist in others. For example, um, inventory. Well, maybe a service company won't have an inventory account. Um, so, you know, there's certain flexibility for companies to prepare their chart of accounts based on their managerial needs. Okay, so these are the accounts that this is a sample of, of the accounts. I mean, in my example, I think I have more than this, but this is a sample of a general ledger, um, of a general ledger uh, account, chart of accounts. Okay. So as you can see, it's composed. It starts off with the balance sheet. It starts off with the assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity, revenues, and expenses. Okay. So those are the different types of accounts that you're going to find in these two different types of balance sheet of, of financial reports that we're going to focus on during this um during these videos so you can see like I said balance sheet has assets and assets consist of things like cash accounts receivable supplies prepaid insurance land office equipment um, accumulated depreciation and I'll try to explain um, a little bit about these as we go on and as we use them in the example uh, liabilities we have accounts payable wages payable unearned rent and stockholders equity we have common stock retained earnings dividends is not an account that's going to um, exist uh, very long it's simply a temporary account where you um, put your dividends and then you close it into retained earnings and you'll see that in the example um, Revenues you have fees earned rent revenue and all these expenses and so forth and so on. Okay, so these accounts um, Have different uh, In accounting we have two sides a debit and a credit side and um, What's the formal definition of debit and the formal definition of credit? Well, you know, just forget about that. I mean, that's really not necessary you just know that each account has a left hand side that we'll call the debit and a right hand side that we'll call the credit. Um, I know that one thing that I confused me when I was younger and didn't know much about accounting was um, you know you always think in terms of well one side increases and the other side decreases well that's not necessarily true. Once One thing a debit may increase but it depends on the classification of the account and a debit will decrease depending on the classification of account and, and depending on the classification of the account, a credit may increase or decrease. So it's really, really important that you understand what increases each type of account. And so right here we have, um, we, we have what is the normal balance side for each type of account. And when I say normal balance, I'm talking about the, the, the side of, um, the entry that will increase 
that balance. So for an asset, for example, a debit will increase that balance. For a liability, a credit will increase that balance. It doesn't mean that we are not going to book debits into the liabilities. We absolutely will. And we will cre um, book credits into the assets, but those are going to reduce the accounts. Here I'm just showing the side that increases each account. For the equity accounts, it, their normal balance is a credit, so an entry on the credit side will increase that balance. For the revenues, the normal balance is a credit, and for the expense, the normal balance is a debit. Okay, and what you see here is what we call a, a, a T format. T formats, as you can see, are very useful for us accountants to explain things and to analyze transactions because we can see them we can see the transaction the flow of data um, very well and we can analyze what occurred among various accounts and you're going to notice in the example that I use T accounts instead of you know uh, general ledger format um, I'll use a T account to book the entry so that you can so that we can better analyze what happens to the value of the account on a net basis okay so I included this here which is something that I used when I was younger it helped me out a little um, it's an acronym I was taught by somebody to use the acronym Alice you know the name of a female name and the two outer letters will increase with debits and the two outer letters stand for assets and expenses so if you think of the word Alice the two corner letters are going to increase um, with debits and the three middle letters uh, liabilities here I'll use I for income instead of revenues but this one stands for revenue and C for capital instead of equity so the three middle ones will increase with credit and that I just included that in case you in case it helps you I know it helped me I use that a lot um, right at this point in my in my life I have it memorized but um, back then when I first started I, I would get all confused as to what increased with a debit and what increased with the credit and I used to use this um this acronym a lot the acronym Alice so as you can see if you want you can use it as well assets and expenses increases with debits liabilities revenues the income stands for revenues and capital which stands for equity increase with credits okay and that's obviously essential for accounting if you don't understand this then there's no way you can do accounting it's the most basic concept that you need to understand to get started okay and a lot of you might be thinking well this is so simple why is he explaining this you have to understand that this is a a starting course I know that I myself when I started in this course accounting 2021 really didn't understand this that well and so you know I'm gonna start I like to explain everything from scratch so that nobody could um, you know so that everybody could understand um, what I'm what I'm explaining in these videos okay so those are the basics and so let's start explaining a little bit how we go about the um, the accounting process okay the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to journalize each transaction okay so what happens well a transaction occurs um, a transaction is is some sort of action that the company takes the company could purchase um, inventory they can purchase equipment they can sell an item they can exchange one item for another any type of action or transaction that the company incurs in they're going to um, write down an accounting entry that is going to reflect the financial effect at least from account an accounting standpoint of that transaction so in this example we have um, prepaid insurance and cash so what this tells me is that you see how cash ha is on the credit side well cash is an asset if the entry is on the credit side that means that that asset went down so that that's telling me that this company paid cash out prepaid insurance is also an asset right so you're exchanging one asset for another and it's on the debit side so that means that prepaid insurance went up by two thousand four hundred 
right? So in this transaction, you're exchanging one asset for another. One thing to point out is that in GAAP accounting, we use accrual accounting, not cash accounting. So in this case, for example, this is a good example. The company is paying cash out, but are they incurring an expense? No, they're not incurring an expense because they still have the pre, they still have the value of, of, of 2,400, right? It's still there, except that it's no longer in the form of cash. It's, it's in the form of a credit to use insurance. When, when, as you use that insurance, now you're losing the value, right? And it starts to become an expense. But at the moment, it's not an expense. It's simply an exchange of one asset for another. Cash out, prepaid insurance in, so you're exchanging cash, an asset for another asset, a prepaid insurance, right? So it's like if you had a prepaid, um, prepaid phone card. That's would you consider that an expense if you if you took ten dollars out and you bought a prepaid phone card? Well, you you're, you haven't expensed it yet because you have your prepaid phone card, which is it, which is has the same value. So that's not an expense. So every transaction is going to have an equal amount of debits and credits, okay? They should always balance. That's very key. If these don't balance, then, then you have a problem. Now these days, um, with the automated systems, it's very rare for you not to balance because if you try to journalize an entry that doesn't balance, the system is going to tell you and it's not going to permit you to input it. But um back when things were done by you know by hand when things were done manually well a lot of mistakes were done you know you can have mistakes where instead of putting 2400 you you put 240 and you put it in and and you continue to work and don't realize it until you start doing other other things such as the trial balance but but um these days like i said with the automated system it's very rare to do to not have your debit and your credit balance because the, the system will to, tell you automatically if that's the case. Okay, so journalizing is the first step in a journal. When you journalize, you do it by date, right? That's the, that's the organization, each transaction at the time it occurs. So that's the focus here. On December 1, this transaction occurs. It has a debit and a credit. It doesn't have to be just two accounts, okay? You could have various accounts. But you must always have debits and credits, and they must always add up and balance. Each site must be the same, okay? So once you finish all the journalizing, and this I'm explaining just as it's explained by the book, the steps. Again, let's remember that with all the automated systems that we have these days, it doesn't have to be done in this specific order. I mean, when you enter a journal entry, the system will automatically then post it into the GL accounts. However, let's explain it. Let's pretend we're doing this manually and because that is the flow of information. Even in a, in, even in an automatic accounting system, you would, you would enter the journal first. You would enter this entry first. You would journalize it. And then the system will automatically put it into each GL account. So what is a GL account? A GL account is represents each individual account. So here we have each transaction that occurs by date. We're going to have a list of transactions, and in the general and in the journal, general general ledger. Sorry, you're going to have each individual account and the balances in each individual account. So as you can see here, the account here is prepaid insurance. Once you journalize it, you will then go and post it into each individual account. That's called the posting process. So the first step, oops, the first step is the journalizing process, right? You enter the transaction. The second step is to take the transaction and put it in each individual account. That's the posting step. So for example, prepaid insurance goes in here as a debit. This is the entry and this is the total balance. Um, of course, we only have one entry, so the balance will 
fat match the first entry. But here is the running count of the total debit and credit balance. And here is the individual entry. Here we have the cash account. Again, you see cash.